What's going on, y'all? This is your boy Precise, Bob Young of Quarry Red and Precise of Concrete Sheep. Uh, once again, we back at y'all um, uh, to pick up where we left off. We left off uh, last uh, time in uh, the Gospel according to John in chapter 4. So we'll be picking up today in the Gospel according to, uh, according to John chapter 5. So this will be part 1 of the Gospel according to John chapter 5. Um, I thank God for all of you guys who've been on this journey with me. I know uh, some of you guys know me from music. Some of you guys know me from around the way. Some of you guys know me from work or from church. Uh, however you guys know me, I, I thank God. I need you to know that I thank God that we've crossed paths. And and however God has called, called us to cross paths, whether you're family, friends, co-workers, or people that have supported the music over the years uh and but i never wanted to be said that any one of y'all knew me and i did not get a chance to elaborate and and and, and fully express the story the the not not let matter of fact that's not this not the story the truth of christ jesus uh the truth of the son of god the truth of the pre-existent Son of God. It, yes, go, yes, guys. It started uh, be before Mary was uh, conceived of the Holy Spirit. This story, this story starts way before there. It starts before the children of Israel. It starts before Moses. It starts before Abraham. This, the 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 Son of God is an eternal celestial uh, uh, member of the Godhead, uh, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The word Trinity is never actually used in Scripture, but the the sentiment is there that these are one in equality, uh, in, in, in plurality of unity, uh, plurality of singularity. singularity. Uh, this is the eternal God. This is the eternal Son of God who always existed. And, and uh, the book of John gives a great uh, detail into showing how he was here before he, uh, Mag Mary conceived of the Holy Spirit. So this takes Jesus um off the field that some of you guys try to place him on some of you guys try to place jesus on par with other religious figures uh throughout history and that this can never be because the son of god had existed before before the womb none of these other people did so that takes him immediately off the same playing field he is the son of god through which everything you see flesh or spirit was made this is this is who became flesh this is who walked among us this is who laid down his life for us and this is who rose again uh, to give it everlasting life to all those who believe. And we are thankful for the opportunity to just observe while he did walk amongst us according to the flesh, uh, the things he said, the things he did, and the significance then and the significance to our lives now. So we're going to take up, again, this is part uh one of the gospel according to John chapter 5. Father God, we pray in the matchless name of Jesus that you would open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to hear and see and receive what you're saying in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. All right, Charles, so we're going to take up in chapter 1. We just we just uh, finished uh, chapter 4 where, uh, where the, uh, the man's son was healed. And Jesus said, go ahead, go home. Your, your son is healed. And he goes home to find out that his son was healed at this very moment that Jesus had spoken. And now it says in chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Afterwards, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish religious holidays. Inside the city near the Sheep Gate was Bethsaida Pool with five covered platforms or porches surrounding it. Crowds of sick folk, lame, uh, blind, or par with paralyzed limbs, lay on the platforms, waiting for a certain moment for the water, uh, for the movement of the water. For the angel of the Lord, it says, would uh, from time to time stir the waters, and whoever was the first person in the waters would be healed. Uh, 
In verse 5, it says that one of the men laying there had been sick for 38 years. Now, man, this guy had been sick for 38 years sitting here. Jesus saw him and knew, and knew how long he'd been there. And knew along how long he had been ill. And he asked him, would you like to get well? And and this is we we were speaking earlier how this is how Christ he walks by us he Christ passes us by just like he's passing some of y'all by now and he sees your situation you're sitting in some of y'all been in your situation maybe maybe you can walk maybe you're not paralyzed like this guy but something has got you stuck something's holding you back from moving where you got to go and you've been in that situation a really really long time and Jesus is passing by you even today asking would you like to get well the man's reply to this is I can't the sick man says I can't he's telling now this is God in the flesh <laughs> telling him would you like to be well he says I can't the sick man said for I have no one to help me into the pool at the moment or at the movement of the water and while I'm trying to get there someone always gets there ahead of me I can't. I can't be healed. God ain't say, what was your reason? Some of y'all got to listen to this. God ain't saying, why Why are you stuck in your situation? What's stopping you from getting in and out of your situation? What's holding you back from getting, getting where you got to be? Some of y'all, God is just simply asking you, would you like to be? Jesus is asking, would you like to be well? Would you like to be out of that situation? Would you like to get up out of that situation you're in right now? And we come with our excuses of why what we need can't be done. When And Jesus is not asking for your reasons why it can't be done because he's God. He is able. And in verse 8, Jesus tells him, stand up, roll up your sleeping mat and go home. Instantly, the man was healed, rolled up his mat, and began walking. But look what happens, y'all. But it was the Sabbath when this miracle was done, so the Jewish leaders objected. They said to the man who was cured, you can't work on the Sabbath. It's illegal to carry that sleep. He's carrying a sleeping mat. And they say he's doing work. According to them, he was doing work on the Sabbath. And that was uh, not to be done. So they're focusing on their religion. They're, re they're so focused on their religion that they can't see the miracle of God. This man ain't working. This man is holding his testimony right there. But they didn't care because it went against uh, their religious beliefs at the time. And with, look what the man says when they told him he can't do it. They say, listen, the man says, the man who healed me told me to he said the one who healed me told me to do this and like i was saying earlier i have respect to all those who are of the faith who who uh who are mighty men and women of god but i'll tell you one thing uh when, whatever you see me doing whether it's preaching teaching rapping talking in a church in a in, in a in a prison i've been we've been in prisons churches and clubs wherever i'm at to give the good news i'm not when you see me do what i'm doing i do it because God told me to. I do it because the one who healed me told me to. And I'm just not trying to not do what the one who healed me said because of how you feel about it. Uh, no, I'm sorry, but no. And then some of y'all got to hear that. Uh, God, if God has done something in your life, God has broken some things in you, and he's healed you, and he sent you on your way, you got you to gotta turn a deaf ear to anyone. Not, 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 I'm not saying don't hear anyone, but don't hear anyone who tells you to do contrary to what the Holy Spirit has given you to do in this hour. Uh, this has been part one of the gospel according to john chapter five if you're on tiktok you're gonna have to click for part two if you're on youtube watching that just let it roll and it's gonna roll right back into part two if you gotta go god bless y'all i pray y'all stick around this has been part one of the gospel according to john chapter five praise god y'all we're gonna keep it rolling this is now part two uh, we just finished part one of the gospel according to john chapter five this is part two of the gospel according to john uh the gospel according to john chapter five if you missed part one you can go back if you're on if you're on 
YouTube. This is one continuous roll through the chapter, so you can just rewind. If you're on TikTok, you can just go to it says part one of the Gospel of John, chapter five, or you can watch this and go back however God leads you. But we're gonna keep this rolling. The man who was sick for 38 years waiting for the waters to move at the pool jesus asks asks the man do you want to get well he tells jesus he gives god his reasons why he can't get up why he can't move why he can't get healed and we see uh, our lord and savior is not concerned of any of his reasons why it can't happen jesus simply tells him get stand up roll up your mat and go home and the man was instantaneously healed he gets up he starts walking and in, into the religious leaders who have a problem because he's carrying his mat on a sunday not glorifying god that the man can walk and carry anything at all please uh glory to god that i got jesus and i don't got religion praise you lord so his reply, his reply to the, the man who was healed replies to, hey, the one who healed me told me to. And 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 I was encouraging you in, in part one, whatever God has told you to do, obey the one who healed you. Obey the one who set you free. Obey the one who delivered you and got you out of that situation. Because whatever you see me doing, whether it's preaching, teaching, rapping, talking about God, is because the one who healed me sent me to do this. So I'm not trying to hear any other reason or any reason for me not doing what I'm doing with all due respect, but respectively, I got to do what God has said for me to do. All right. So we pick back up after the man who got healed tells the people this. They asked him, who says such a thing? They demanded. The man didn't know. And Jesus had disappeared in the crowd. Jesus is so smooth. He disappears into the crowd. But afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and told him, now that you are well, don't sin as you did before or something worse might happen to you. Sometimes people are just sick, showing us right here. Sometimes people are just sick. Sometimes things you do can cause bad things to come upon you. Don't. That's not me. It's right there. No, precise, no, no it's right there. He said, don't sin as you did before. Jesus called him out. You were sinning. And don't sin like that no more. And Or something might worse might happen to you. Some of y'all, God set y'all free. And you sinning. And the same thing applies. It, 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 it don't stop or something worse might happen than the thing that God set you free from. Glory to God. Have mercy on all of us. In the matchless name of Jesus. Then the man went to his fellow Jewish leaders. Then the man went to his fellow Jewish leaders and told them it was Jesus who had healed him. So they began harassing Jesus as a Sabbath breaker. Because now look, they're saying, oh, you, you, you breaking the Sabbath. But Jesus in verse 17 tells them, my father constantly does good. And I'm following his example. God don't, it do, do God stop? Does the Father in heaven stop doing good? Oh, I'm not going to do nothing good today because it's the Sabbath day. No, God is good. Don't, don't, we, don't we say it in the church all the time? God is good all the time and all the time God is good. So Jesus is saying all the time that my Father does good. So I'm doing what he's doing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In uh, verse uh, where we at? 18, in 18 it says, Then the Jewish leaders were all the more eager to kill him. He said, listen, I'm doing good. I'm doing good because I see my father doing good. And because he's telling that one, you want to kill me? Because I go against your religion? Your religious? I'm, I, I just... I just healed a man who couldn't walk for 38 years. And now you want to kill me. Come on now. The people that have always killed and murdered in the name of religion and 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 uh, and, um, and, and uh, believed that they were doing God a service when they were really only serving their own agenda. Mm, but that's another story. Then the Jewish Jewish leaders were all the more eager to kill him 
Because in addition to disobeying their Sabbath, their, look what it says, their Sabbath laws. He had spoken of God as his father, thereby, thereby making himself equal to God. Jesus replied, hey, the son can do nothing by himself. I don't do none of this stuff on my own. The son, he only, he does only what he sees the father doing. I do what I see my father doing. I don't do this on my own. And in the same, and in the same way, I see him doing it. For the father loves the son and tells him everything he is doing. And the son will do more, far more awesome miracles than this man's healing. I'm doing what I see my father doing. My father tells me everything he's doing and shows me what to do, and I'm doing it. So if you mad at me, you you ain't mad at me. You you and actually you are you 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 claiming to serve my father, but you're going against him, and you're mad at what he's doing. Ishamaya. Twenty one. He will even raise from the dead. Anyone who want, he wants to, just as the father does. He tell him, listen, not only I, you're going to see me. Jesus is telling you who he is. I do what my father tells me to do. And the way he tells me to do it, he tells me everything to do. And you think this is something you ain't seen nothing yet. Because just like my father raises anyone from the dead he want to, so shall his son do the same. Hmm. And the father leaves all judgment of sin to his son. And so we are coming at me, but I'm the one that's going to judge sin. I'm the one that's going to judge you, Jesus is saying. So that everyone will honor the son just as they honor the father. Yes, I am claiming equality. He's giving on the well. He's giving on to the God. He's, he's he's letting you know that I do with the the son, and they will honor the son just as they honor the father. It's, it's, he's saying like like um, he's letting them know that everything I do is what my father told me to do. So that and and so that they will honor the son just as they honor the father. The the, the, the this honor that's being bestowed on me is from the father, and y'all mad at it. But if you refuse to honor God's son, whom he sent to you, then you are certainly not honoring the father. If you don't honor the son, you're not honoring the father. Oh, I'm, that's not my religion. I just go to God directly. Then if you're not honoring the son, I don't care what you claim you're doing. You're not honoring the father. No matter how dedicated you is to that. In the next verse, in verse 24, he says, I say emphatically that anyone who listens to my message and believes in God and who sent me has eternal life. Anyone who believes in my message mm, and believes in God who sent me has eternal life and will never be damned for his sins, but has already passed out of death into life. I've passed from death into I believe the Son and I believe the Father who sent them. Um, this life to live for me to live is Christ, to die is gain, because no matter what happens to precise, I'm good. My I, I have a blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Eternal life is mine, and it could be yours too. If you if, if 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 today was your last day, are you certain of where you're going? Do you have that blessed assurance? And if you don't, Jesus can give that to you. Jesus says, whoever believes in my message and believes in God who sent me has eternal life. This has been part two of the gospel according to John. Uh, stick around for part three. If this is YouTube, just let it play. It's going to play the part three. If it's TikTok, click on part three. And if you got to go, God bless you. We'll catch you next time. If you can stick around. Stay tuned for part three of the gospel according to John, chapter five. Hey, what's going on, y'all? Um, this We're going to pick right back up where we left off. This is part three of the gospel according to John, chapter five. Um, 
uh, for those of you I've missed, if this is TikTok, you can go back and catch uh, part one and part two, or you can stay here, follow from here, and go back and catch those. If you're on YouTube watching this, you've been on a continuous loop, so we just slide them from part one, part two, and right now into part three of the gospel according to John chapter five. Uh, and uh, Jesus had just healed the man who was crippled for 38 years. The religious leaders had a problem because the man was carrying his mat. They considered that work. And they asked who did this. When they find out it was Jesus, uh, they're, they're coming against them. And Jesus said, listen, my, Jesus hits them with the whammy. He said, my father constantly does good no matter what day it is. And I'm following his example. We In the church, we say God is good all the time, right? So I'm going to be good all the time from Saturday to Sunday and every other day through the week. Uh, and we're going to pick right back up where Jesus is telling him. Jesus told him, and I emphatically say to you, before we left off, he was saying, I emphatically say that anyone who listens to my message and believes in God who sent me has eternal life. And we were ending, we were saying, when we end, we said, uh, um, I, do you have that blessed assurance? I do. For me to live is, is, is Christ. I, I'm having, I, I bless God to walk this earth, but if I'm called tomorrow, if I lose my life in this earth tomorrow, I'm straight and straight. And and I know that I know that I know that I know that I got that blessed assurance. Do you? Do you have that? Jesus said, anyone who believes in me, who listens to my message and believes in the God, who my God who sent me. And he says, I emphatically, I say anyone who listens to my message and believes in God who sent me has eternal life. Do you have that blessed assurance tonight, today? And if not, you can, if you believe in the message of the cross, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ, the, his, his crucifixion to pay for our sins, and his resurrection from the dead. And if we would trust in him and believe in God who sent him, you too can have that blessed assurance and the gift of everlasting life will be yours. So we're going to pick right back up right now. And this is part three of the gospel according to John chapter 5. And it, it picks up in verse 25. We're picking up in verse 25 where Jesus is, can, this is this still red letter, y'all. Jesus is still directly talking. And he says, And I solemnly declare that the time is coming, and in fact it's here, when the dead will hear my voice, the voice of the Son of God. And those who listen shall live. The father has life in himself and has granted his son to have life in himself. And he, the father, has and granted him to judge the sins of all mankind. I don't care who you claim and believe in, the son of God will judge you according to his word. So the, the message of the cross ain't for me, it's for you. The message of the cross is for the entire planet. And to judge the sins of all mankind because he's the son of man. So don't be surprised in verse 26. He says in verse 26. So don't be surprised. Indeed, the time is coming when all the dead, he says, when all the dead in their graves will hear the voice of God's son and shall rise again. Those who have done good, they will rise to eternal life. Those who have continued in evil to eternal judgment. So, rising at the sound of his voice from the dead, some to eternal life, some to eternal death and damnation. But we're going to get into this and in that part another time. But sounds like one synonymous event to me. But we'll we'll get into uh, you guys' belief and uh, do you guys believe that some of y'all believe that y'all are poof, out of here before any trouble come? Uh, good luck with that one. Love you, but good luck with that one. Man, but that's another time we'll get into that. In verse thirty, it says, "But I pass no judgment without consulting the Father. Everything I'm saying is in accordance with the will of the Father." Jesus is saying, 
For I judge as I'm told. And my judgment is absolutely fair and just, for it is according to the will of God who sent me. I'm judging according to God's will. So don't tell me you're circumventing Jesus or uh, getting to God another way, uh, because no, no, no. He says, I judge according to the will of God. I am judging according to the God that all y'all are trying to, to, uh, to reach. Thank you, Lord. I judge according to the will of God who sent me and not merely on my own. I'm not judging on my own, Jesus said that. Like I said, again, take Jesus off that even plane for you. I got him on, but this is Jesus. This is my religious leader. This is my religious leader. This is my religious leader. This is mine, 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 mine. No, Jesus is the only one who existed before the womb. He's the only one who came from heaven, is qualified to tell you about how to get there. He's not on the playing field with none of these other guys. Sorry. Jesus is Lord, Master, and Savior. Now, in verse 30, again, he says, But I pass no judgment without consulting the Father, as I judge as I am told, and my judgment is absolutely fair and just, for it is according to the will of God who sent me, and not merely my own. When I make claims about myself, they aren't believed. When I make claims about myself, they aren't believed, he says in verse 31. But someone else, yes, John the Baptist is making these claims for me too. John, y'all believe John? He, John was talking about me. He told y'all that. You have gone out to listen to his preaching. And I can assure you that all he says was about me. Y'all all went out to listen to John the Baptist. And he was talking about me. And all he says about me is true. In verse 34, but the truest witness I have is not from a man. I thank my God in heaven for everything John the Baptist said about me. But the truest witness I have is not a man, for I have been for, um, is not from a man, though I have reminded you about John's witness, so that you will believe in me and be saved. And John shone brightly for a while, and you benefited and rejoiced. But I have a greater witness than John testifying to who I am. I refer to the miracles I do. These have been assigned me by the Father. Like aside from John, the things you see me doing when I'm opening the eyes of the blind, when I'm raising the, 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 the paralyzed man, when I'm healing the leper, these miracles have been assigned to me as a witness as a witness to who I am and to who sent me. The Father in heaven has assigned me to do these miracles that they would testify to the truth I tell you. And you still won't believe those. Hmm. Jesus. Okay, um, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll add a, actually, before we go on to verse thirty. Oh, we're going to continue 34. We're going to, we're going to, for, for those of y'all who are watching on YouTube, just keep on watching. This is going to roll right into part four. If you're on TikTok, um, you're, uh, this has been the gospel according to John part three of chapter five. I advise you to click on and check out uh, part four we're about to get into. If you got to go, God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face to shine upon you. But I advise you to stick around. God bless you. Peace. Praise in the name of the living God. All glory and honor to Jesus. Uh, bless, the, bless his holy name. This is your boy Precise Bob Young of Corby Red and Precise of Concrete Sheep. Uh, we've been traveling, uh, taking this wonderful journey through the gospel according to John. I repeat, some of y'all know me from music, from around the way, from work, from church, wherever you know me from. I'm blessed the Lord that we've crossed paths, but I, I would consider it a disservice if, when, in whatever way you know me, that you didn't hear the gospel of Christ from me uh, as a friend, as a family member, as however you know me. 
uh, in this life. And we've been taking an amazing journey through the Gospel of John to show that, 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 that the Son of God, the eternal Son of God, existed way before the womb of Mary. Uh, this, he is the eternal Son of God to which the Christ was born. Yes, the Son of God is pre-existent, always was, always will be, and nothing that you see made that was made according to the flesh or made in the spirit was created without him. All things were created by him. And the Gospel of, 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 of John does a great job of illustrating this to us, and, we, and we're getting into uh, his life according to when he walked in, incarnate in the flesh. And... Um, and we're taking a look at the things he did, the things he said, and how they are relevant here and how they relate to our lives even right now uh, in Jesus' name. So we're going to continue, Father God, in the name of Jesus, as always, Lord, we ask you, Lord, we don't lean on our own understanding. We pray you, Lord, that you would open our understanding, open our eyes, open our ears to hear what you're saying. Holy Spirit, that you would teach and we would just follow your teaching show us the things we need to know as they relate to then and as they relate to us right here and right now in jesus matchless name amen all right yo y'all so we're going to continue where jesus is saying listen i don't even have to testify my, about myself y'all questioning my authority to do what i'm doing he said y'all all went out to see john the baptist you all went out to either get baptized or listen to him preaching. And he said, I'm telling you, everything he said was about me. Because he, 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 his, John's whole purpose was to make straight the path for the coming of the Lord. <clears throat> so Jesus said, everything John said was about me. He said, but I got as blessed as John would ever have a greater witness that testified to me than even John the Baptist. The miracles that have been assigned for me to do in my father's name, the miracles that have been assigned for me to do by my father testify. Because God has assigned, the father assigned me to do this stuff. So when I heal the blind, when I loose the mute tongue, when I give hearing, to those who are deaf, when I lift the paralytic off the floor and he begins to walk, when I when I speak life to Lazarus out the grave with a little girl who had died, these things are not of my own doing. God, the Father in heaven, has assigned me to do this, that they would testify to who I am and to and testify that I am who I say I am and I have the authority and the power and the right to do what I'm doing. So we're going to pick back right back up there in verse uh, 31. We says, when I make claims about myself, they aren't believed. But if someone else, yes, John the Baptist is making these claims for me too. And you have gone out to listen to him preaching, and I can assure you that all he says is about me and true, but the truest witness I have, verse 34, but the truest witness I have is not from man, though I have reminded you about John's witness, so that you will believe in me and be saved. In verse 35, John shone brightly for a while, and you benefited and rejoiced, but I have a greater witness then John, I refer to the miracles I have been assigned to do. The, the, the miracles assigned me by the Father, and they prove that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself has also testified about the Father has testified about me, Jesus is saying. Though not appearing to you personally or speaking to you directly, but you are not listening. But you are not listening. For you refuse to believe me. What else, Jesus said, what else God got to show you? Everything I'm doing. You know there's no way for no man to do all this on his own. God is showing him, you who I am. And he's showing you I have the right to do what I'm doing and say what I'm saying. But um, in another, another portion of scripture it says, but... The light had entered the world, but men despised the light because their deeds were dark. Some of y'all, it's not that you are so confused about the message that of Christ Jesus. Some of us, we simply don't, like the Pharisees, 
some of us just don't want to listen. Not because, well, I don't know if I believe. No, no. You want something cozy. You want something to make you cozy in your sin. So you want to be able to sin and, and something to make you feel cozy in it. But the message of Christ, the light of Christ exposes our dark. And we like our dark. So because we want to hold on to our dark, we don't, want, we don't want to say, I want to hold on to my dark. We say, well, I don't believe in Jesus. Because really, technically, you just want to hold on to your dark. And that's what's going on here. He says, but you are not listening to me, for you refuse to believe me. You search the scriptures. You Some of y'all, yeah, get deep in the book. You search the scriptures, for you believe they give you eternal life. But I got news for you. Reading the Bible on its own will not give you everlasting life. There's plenty of men and women who read and study and got all kind of degrees in this, in this, in this word. And that will never enter the kingdom of God. Though they could quote you from Genesis to Revelation. Will never see God because they study the book. But don't obey the God of the word. And the scriptures point to me. Everything you read and point to me. Yet you won't come to me so I can give you life eternal. You approve, but your approval or disapproval means nothing to me. Oh, Lord, I love how Jesus speaks. Your approval or disapproval don't mean nothing to me. And some of y'all, y'all got to get that to get that thick skin. People's approval or disapproval, you can't mean nothing in this hour. Do what God has called you to do in this hour. For as I know so well, you don't have God's love within you. He said, I know. You know why your approval or disapproval don't mean nothing to me? He said, because you don't got God's love in you. And if God's love is, ain't inside of you, then what am I waiting for your approval for? Thank you, Jesus. I know because I have come to you representing my father and you refuse to welcome me, though you readily enough receive those who aren't from him. You receive anybody else who come in their own name, but you won't receive me. But represent only themselves somebody come you let you meet a celebrity you'll be some of y'all y'all believe anything a celebrity tell y'all let somebody be famous and tell you oh i heard i heard this one talking about this online you ready to drink whatever eat whatever do whatever because someone come in their own name and their own celebrity to you and jesus come in the name of his father and is offering you so much more but we won't believe him why because we want to hold our dark hmm no wonder you can't believe, for you gladly honor each other, but you don't care about the honor that comes from God. Y'all want to pat each other on the back, but you don't want to receive the honor that comes from God. Because that honor involves picking up your cross. That honor involves dying daily. That, uh, that, that honor involves dying to self. And, and that honor uh, uh, involves all glory going to God and not you and me. Yet it is not I who will accuse you of this to the Father. Moses will. On whose laws you set your hopes of heaven. For if you for you have refused to believe Moses, and he wrote about me. But you refuse to believe him, so you refuse to believe in me. And since you don't believe what he wrote, no wonder you don't believe in me. So Jesus is saying everything that all the prophets wrote point to me. I am the truth. I am the answer. I am the only way. And I know which situation you're in. And I'm your way out of it. Not in this life, but also in the life to come. God loves y'all. He, he is who he says he is. And he can do what he says he can do. I'm a living testimony to that, and so are millions and millions of others. Uh, hear his voice and don't harden your heart before it's too late. God bless you. This has been part four of the gospel according to John chapter five. God bless you all. Peace.